Welcome to Applied Food Science and Engineering with Prof. Vigent. Let's talk about material science, chocolate, and strawberries. The cocoa butter in chocolate forms crystals, and these may be in a variety of configurations depending on how the chocolate has been treated before we got to this point. Properly tempered chocolate won't melt easily in my hands, as you can see here. It also has a good texture. The lack of snap in this particular chocolate might be due to the temperature. Let's talk more about that. You notice, though, it broke rather than bending, folding, or melting. Let's put some of this chocolate in the fridge and some more here in the freezer. Time passes. While time passes, let's talk about what would be the best texture to cover this little fella in. Popular foods that are soft and chewy, soft or crunchy, and foods crisp on the outside and soft in the middle, or foods that are the other way around. In the case of a chocolate-covered strawberry, we probably want our exterior and interior textures matched, or the exterior to be crisp and thin, not to require a whole bunch of chewing and gnawing to get through. That tends to be what consumers prefer. Of course, it really depends on what you like. I don't like getting shards of chocolate all over my shirt. To illustrate how we control that, while we're still waiting for the chocolate in the freezer, let's make a simple sugar syrup just by heating sugar until it liquefies. Temperature all the way up. Added just a teaspoon of water for better control. Now we heat the living daylights out of this and wait. Boiling, you can see that the solution has clarified considerably. It'll start browning soon want to let this get to perhaps 250 or so. You can also tell that the water is being driven off as the size of the bubbles increases. The temperature will head way up, above 250 even. Now to pour it out and illustrate our point. A given material will have what is called a glass transition temperature. Below that temperature, the solid will shatter like a glass, whereas above that temperature, the solid isn't melting, but will tend to bend and be pliable. My sugar syrup is still warm, so it is basically still a liquid at this point. As it cools, you see I have a solid that has formed. And this solid is pliable. I can stretch it. I can bend it around easily. This is, in fact, where I'd want this to be, were I making taffy or trying to make one of those fancy sugar swans that you see on the Food Network. As my sugar syrup cools further to something more like room temperature, something very interesting happens. Listen to this. It snapped. At a high temperature, the candy was pliable and soft and would be chewy if it wouldn't burn my mouth. Whereas at a low temperature, a temperature I can handle, it is a glass. It breaks, it shatters, rather than uh, being something that is chewy. Let's check back with the refrigerated chocolate. Yeah, it's a bit of a snap there. How about the chocolate from the freezer? Ooh, that's hard. It also doesn't taste as good. It takes more effort to chew, and because it's so far from melting, it tastes more like plastic than like actual chocolate. Given the same food in both liquid and solid form, the liquid will tend to taste more intense. So, in my mind, the best chocolate-covered strawberry has either a very thin coating of chocolate and is served below chocolate's last transition temperature, or a richer, thicker coating of chocolate but is served above the glass transition temperature so there's no shattering. But now you understand the science so you can design it one way or the other. Thanks for watching.